Welcome back. Don't forget to set your clocks back when you go to bed on Saturday. We are falling back with daylight saving. That means we get an extra hour of sleep. And while that's nice for some of us, it does make things a little difficult for the kids. And this morning we have the author of best selling books, Dr. Harvey Karp, to tell us all about it, to help us out. Doctor, welcome this morning. Thanks, Doc. Of course, you may be familiar with his books, Happiest Baby on the Block, Happiest Toddler on the Block. I am, that's for sure. Some great advice there. Okay, doctor, I know it's only an hour change, but why is this so disruptive for our children? Well, it's an hour change in our lives, but in a child's life, an hour change is like a three hour change. So they have a big disruption, especially for kids we're talking about under five, six, seven years of age. Um, and so that's why it's such a huge change for them. Great. I have a five-year-old and I have a nine-month-old. I'm not looking forward to this. What can we do now to make this transition easier? Well, for, for kids your age, um, the best thing is to start moving bedtime. Start today. Actually, move the bedtime 15 or 20 minutes later. Just scooch it a little bit later tonight and then a little bit later tomorrow. Then you've already knocked out you know, 30 to 40% of, uh, uh, of the change. 50% of the change, and then you'll be able to do the last part of the change on Sunday. Those little shifts make it much easier for a child to, to adapt. Yeah, thank you for that. So she usually goes to bed, the baby baby goes to bed at 6.30. Maybe I'll move it 6.45, 7 o'clock today. So uh, 7 is a big jump, maybe 6.45, 6.50. Okay. Go in little steps. If you do it over two or three days, it actually makes it so much easier. And do you use white noise with the kids? Of course. Okay, so <laughs> white fan. noise is a great helper for, it's really kind of like, a, you know how kids like teddy bears? Yes. It reassures them when they sleep with a teddy bear. White noise is kind of like a teddy bear for your ears, and um, but you want it rumbly. So sometimes if it's too, too high pitched, that can be a problem. Okay. And so you want to even wrap your white noise machine in a sweater or a sweatshirt to make it a little bit more rumbly. Oh. And then one last thing to help get your day night oriented is to get Daylight exposure, get outside during the day. Some fresh air and daylight helps to reset your melatonin, which is the brain's natural sleep hormone. Uh, last point is um, for nighttime, keep it a little bit brighter for those, those um, the, the hour before bedtime. Make sure that's a little bit brighter in the house. That also delays the melatonin that the brain naturally releases so that that sets the bedtime a little bit later. So what you're saying is like take her out for a walk maybe um, before bedtime? No, the walk can be during the daytime okay. because that's when it's bright and light. Mm -hmm. But it, um, for an hour before bedtime, have it a little bit brighter in the house. Gotcha. A little bit more light is going to delay the release of the natural sleep hormone so she won't feel sleepy as soon as she might otherwise. Got it. Okay, so kids obviously aren't the only ones who may be affected by this. What about for the adults? Any advice for us? Well, usually for adults, it's actually a bonus, right? You get you get an extra hour to be able to have your head on the pillow. We're we're all chronically sleep deprived. I think that's a national, you know, problem mm -hmm. that we have. And so for most adults, they actually do well. But if you're concerned about that and you do have a problem, a way that adults oftentimes reset their 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 brain clock is by taking um, like a three milligram tablet of melatonin. You can buy it at any drugstore over the counter. That's a pretty good tip for people who are traveling across time zones and they have jet lag. Um, the, the three milligrams of melatonin taken an hour before bedtime, again, it gets the brain in sync with mm -hmm. what the new time is. And we also do well if we go out during the day and get good um, exposure to sunshine. I know we addressed babies and children five years old. What about older kids? Well, toddlers, uh, I'd rather teenagers need that extra hour. They're working on a, on a 25 hour clock all the time. And so usually for, for preteens and teens, that hour just gets gobbled up and they, they really have the opportunity because they're staying up late anyway, doing their homework and whatever. So usually that's a pretty good transition. And then for the little, little babies under six months of age, um, we actually have something called SNU, which is a, a, a robotic or responsive baby bed that we use in the first six months that rocks and shushes babies all night. We've shown that you can add an hour or more to the baby's sleep. So that just in general helps to get these little kids in balance. Because as you've experienced, sometimes that's the, that's the toughest time mm -hmm. for sleep when you're dealing with a, a young child. 
Uh, where can people find your books? Uh, the books are at any bookstore or Amazon. And there's lots more information on our website, which is happiestbaby.com. You saved my life with the first baby. I'm telling you, happiest baby on the block. It was like, oh, this is what we need to do. Because, you know, when it's so new, you have no idea. With the second baby, you're like, all right, I've got the experience. Yeah, exactly right. But with toddlers, so there's the happiest toddler on the block. You, thank you for mentioning that. Because, you know, when you have a, once you have a baby, you know, you'll buy five books about babies, but then never buy another book because you're just winging it and you're just yeah. trying to get through your day. But there are some very simple techniques that could really make a difference in terms of how you raise a child, help them be more patient and cooperative. So I often ask people, you know, just take five hours less of TV time and see if you can invest it in, in reading a good book about, about learning how to deal with toddlers. Okay, I'm going to do that because you said so. And I trust you, <laughs> Dr. Harvey Karp. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your advice. Take care, Stella. Good talking with you.